Welcome to the World Beyond Belief. I'm Paul Marco, and today we're honored to have a, a real special guest, something I've been, someone that I've been wanting to interview for a while now. Uh, her name is Ramola D, and she's a targeted individual also, but I think she comes at it from a little bit different perspective, and uh, I want uh, I want to have a really nice dialogue with her and get her. Uh, viewpoint on what's happening, what's happening to her, and what's happening throughout the world. So welcome to the World Beyond Belief, Ramola. Glad to have, glad to have thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you for inviting me onto your show. I mean, I've watched your show so many times, and I've seen your recent interviews with Dr. Katherine Horton and with Dr. Eric Karlstrom, and I'm blown away, as always, by the, you know, the depth of your conversations and well, the wonderful things that your guests bring to the show. Well, thank you, and thank you for being here. Uh, well, let's start off by giving uh, the people that don't know you some of the background on uh, how you got to be a targeted individual, although you may not know. Um, right, right. And, yeah. uh, okay. and how we got um, here. Well, okay. You know, I'm actually a writer and a teacher. I've been teaching at the college level for many years. Um, I've been teaching creative writing and English composition. And um, actually, in the Washington, D.C. area, I lived there for about, oh gosh, I don't even know the exact figure, probably 25 years or so. But we recently moved out to the Boston area when my husband got a job here. This was about five years ago. And um, when we moved here, I was working on my writing, so I did not immediately look for a teaching job again. Uh, but what I started to do, I think within like a year or so, I started to run children's workshops. My daughter at that time was, well, when we first came up here, she was six years old. And there was a real dearth of after-school art workshops and creative writing workshops for kids that age. So I started up these um, creativity workshops at my home, um, teaching kids from the age of actually seven, I think it was when, when I started. Um, but I did eventually take kids who were as young as five and six as well into my art classes. Um, so I started these classes uh, for, for these kids, and I ran a series of after-school workshops and summer camps, and I did this for about two years, I think, very successfully. And then something happened. So here is exactly what happened. So my daughter is not, was now, I think, in third grade, and she was eight years old. And, you know, I was very involved at the school. I was volunteering at the school. Again, I was running art and creative writing workshops at the school. I was just helping out, just like any other mom at the school. And um, turns out we were going to have a parent-teacher conference coming up early one November. This was November 2013. And I ended up having a conversation with a woman who, at that time, was the treasurer of the school board. And she later became the president of the school board, I think a couple of years later. But at that time, she was not the president. There was a guy called Alexander Stefan who was the president. And he had one boy in our school. Now, this was a private Montessori school. It's in Quincy, Massachusetts, which is the home of, you know, John Quincy Adams, founding father, etc. In fact, very close to the Quincy family mansion. And this guy, Alexander Stefan, has an equivalent mansion sitting on top of the hill directly opposite the Adams family mansion. <laughs> Now, the reason I mention this is because when this started happening to me, and I'll tell you how, okay, let me go back. So I had this conversation with this woman about um, the parent-teacher conference, and what they are proposing this year to do, this was 2013, was to um, institute a new child care fee, charging parents something like $5 per hour or whatever, just to park their child at the school while, while their other children were having, um, you know, while, while the parents were having a parent-teacher conference. So I, you know, I'm outspoken, I speak my mind, I'm very direct, and I just said this was the silliest idea I ever heard. I mean, so far we've been having parent-teacher conferences quite successfully without anybody being paid. And you know, my daughter doesn't need to be babysat, she just sits outside the classroom with a book while I'm inside talking to the teacher. So we ended up having a slightly heated discussion, and the next thing you know, literally the next week, all hell breaks loose on my street. I should also backtrack a little bit and say that around this time, I wrote to senators. I wrote to senators Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, who you know are the senators of Massachusetts over here, mm -hmm. um, and to a couple of state reps, a chap called Tacky Chan, 
And um, I think I copied my letter to the, to the city council as well, the Quincy City Council. Because for the first time in my life, on a walk with my dog in the neighborhood, I had looked up and I had seen these, you know, white trails in the sky, and they were crisscrossing. And I didn't understand what on earth they were. And I went home and Googled crisscrossing white trails. <laughs> That's literally what I Googled. And I came upon this vast trove of information yes. about camp trails, you know? And to me, that information is undeniable because there are people like Clifford Conacom. And, you know, various, Rosalie Bertel, Rosalind Peterson, who's gone before the UN and talked yes. about it. Various people who've done incredible research, who've found out the constitution of these countries. They've discovered there's all these ghastly heavy metals in them. And it made me think, I mean, look at me. Here I am, focused on organic food for my child. I'm a vegan, so careful what I put inside my body and inside the bodies of my family. And, and we're growing vegetables in the garden. And the stuff is raining down on us. I mean, what price organic growing? Nothing is going to be the way you intend when the stuff is raining down on us. So, in any case, so at that time, I had also written a letter to all these senators saying, it, this is highly disturbing. And I'd also noticed, you know, trees were damaged. There's fungus yes. in all of the trees in the neighborhood. You know, the trees are dying. And I mentioned that as well. And I got back, you know, later on, I got back a letter from Mr. Daggy Chan, the rep. You know, he said, oh, I've consulted the city arborist, and it's only the maples, and only the maples get this kind of fungus, and they get it every year. Well, I beg to defer, because I was yeah. looking at the leaves, and there were black pock marks on every single leaf in the neighborhood, whether it was a maple or oak or hickory or whatever, you know? Um, and I was teaching nature in classes, so I kind of knew my trees. Yes. So, so these are the two main things that I had done in that week. I had spoken to the treasurer, and I had written to senators about chemtrails. The next week, my street was filled with cars. People started parking on our street at all hours of the day and night. They waited for me as I got in the driveway. They parked right in front of my driveway and looked at me, you know, very deliberately. And as I'm pulling out to go, because I was teaching at that time at a couple places lo locally, at a preschool and at an art center close by. So every time I went out to, to go to my jobs, I was pretty much escorted there by a joker who was parked right outside my driveway, who then proceeded to follow me and parked in front of the church where I was going to go, you know, deliver mm -hmm. my classes. So this went on forever, and I began to realize, my God, am I under surveillance? Is this what is going on? And all sorts of other horrible things started happening very, very quickly. So that was, I started having organized stalking within one week. Mm -hmm. And then within another week, literally in the middle of the night, my entire family, we were woken up by waves of thermal energy coming in through the window. Oh. And um, this was when my daughter was sleeping in the bedroom with us, you know, on her, in her own little bed. And all three of us were waking up at the same time in the middle of the night with extreme heat. Oh. So this was not imagined by any of us. And then one morning, very early one morning, I literally felt my brain probed. Literally, I could feel the yeah. different lobes inside my head because I felt remotely probed, and I was. And I was kind of paralyzed. I couldn't move. It was very early in the morning, and I could not move, and I could feel this going on. So these are the ghastly things that happened and shortly after that i started being tracked it seemed i was being aerially stopped there was a constant plane coming over yeah. and tracking and every time i moved from room to room i would hear hits on the side of the house as if something was registering you know it was as if a brain print had been taken it was as if i was being tracked by my brain waves which is ultimately what I read about later, and which I have come to understand is most definitely what is going on. Uh, but in addition to that, I have since been, you know, I've been sharp shot in broad daylight a couple times. So I actually have RFID tracking chips inside me. And I have Jeez. seen these 
so-called covert operatives, they're, they're not that covert, you know. They're using these barcode readers. With a barcode reader or a barcode scanner, I can be scanned now. This chip inside me can be scanned. So this has happened to me innumerable times in grocery stores, in retail stores. The UPS guy who drives up and who points it at me. The mailman who drives up and points it at me. Because these are guys who are all acting as yeah. covert operatives. For who knows who, whether it's the CIA or DHS or who knows, I don't know. But, but they're definitely living a double life. So, in any case, to go back, so I was tracked, and the other thing I noticed about being tracked was cars began zooming into our street, and they are still doing that, although they, they back off every time I do something over it, like this. I, like right now, the cars right. are being very silent. They're just parked in ah. front of my neighbor's house, and they probably, the, the jokers are inside my neighbor's house, because at this point, the neighbors have been taken over. But cars began zooming into the street, and you know, as I moved from room to room, these cars would go up the street with me. And at the same time, I began to feel an intense pencil of vibration being laid on my body. And so the correlation between that vibration, which was distinctly electrical, an electrical vibration laid on my body, and then the cars going up and down, began to be kind of indisputable. They would drive up, park, and hit, and this is what they did constantly, you know, so as I'm moving, and literally we are living in a sort of a square block, so it's easy for cars to go, you know, literally in a rectangle around right. the block and do this thing. So when you start feeling electromagnetic signals on your body, it is absolutely irrefutable. And you can actually start measuring this. But you know, all of this took me time eventually to, to read about what was going on to other people, to find out that you can get meters to measure these signals, and to get a meter, which I did eventually, and which was very helpful because it measured all sorts of pulses, you know, and I started taking readings. That first meter was stolen from my hands. Oh. And my house was frequently broken into in the, in, in, during the daytime. And small things would be, you know, left in disarray. My plants, they, they love to come and kill my plants. I love gardening. I have a ton of plants both inside and outside. Well, in good weather, it's snowing right now. But I would find one little twig of the plant broken off, or one leaf turned, uh, turned brown and shriveled. You know, or if I had three plants of a certain kind, one of them would be killed. And a lot of like sick, um, gluey stuff thrown on the walls, um, desecrating my boots, put on the coffee table. You know, so, it's, so it almost looks like, oh, it's a coffee stain or something, but it's yeah. not. It's somebody has, oh, and in my art room where I had my classes, frequently in the, on the table, I would see this gooey, sticky stuff left. And I actually read that other people have had the exact same experience with this gooey, sticky stuff all over their houses. Sure. Yeah, so, so, you know, I began to realize the house was being broken into. You know, so we changed locks initially. My husband was very spurred in the beginning, and, you know, he, he helped a great deal, especially the first week. He went and got me a lot of shielding and so forth. Um, but I think his patience ran thin after a week or so of this, because I was trying to shield from these signals which were hitting me night and day and the first week when i didn't have shielding i thought i was going to die because i know that what microwave what microwave radiation does you know mm -hmm. and i know the cancerous effects of microwave radiation um and literally what was happening was i was being sleep deprived which means i was, I was being yes. woken up five times during the night both by helicopter flyovers at specific REM cycle times during the night, as well as by people making noises outside, as well as by attacks of radiation. And I would get up in the morning, I barely slept, my hair was literally falling out. I could lift my hands, my head, and my hair was falling out. I was totally nauseous. So I thought, oh my God, great. It's happening yeah. overnight. I'm getting cancer. I'm going to die. <laughs> oh my God. 
Uh, and this, this was not a joke. It was in that first week I was distraught. I was devastated. It was, I think, um, the first week of December. And I remember clearly, and this is why I want to harken back to that school board president. So we had a school play. And we went to the school play. And, you know, all the parents were sort of talking and, look, you know, you're just socializing and so forth. And I looked across at this guy, and he looked across at me, and he had such a guilty look on his face, but also kind of a gleeful guilty look on his face, right? Yeah. But he avoided me. He did not speak to me. He just looked at me, and I felt, certainly this is intuition. This is nothing more than intuition. But I felt in that instant it was this guy. It was Alexander Stefan, president of the school board at Adams Montessori School in 2013 and 2014, who was an FBI informant, and the FBI is totally corrupt, and he went to the local fusion center, and he gave my name as God knows what, however he named it. You know, the local troublemaker, etc., etc. But literally, what has happened since then, I think, and this is what I think is happening to TIs all over the country, is that not merely are you being named something or someone to be watched and to be surveilled, you are being put on a surveillance list and a blacklist. And once you are put on that list, you are fair game for the military to take over and for the CIA to take over and use your body and your brain for experimentation purposes. And this is what they have set down in writing in their completely bogus laws. You know, so you can go to 52, what is it, 5240.1R, military directive. You can go to the executive order 12333. You can go to um, the CIA's AR2-2, and you will see written there that um, civilians under surveillance can be used for experimentation purposes. So this is the kind of absolutely invidious situation that we are currently facing, where they have written into law that they can use people's bodies. You know, so they think this is legal, this is above board, and many people, in fact, have told me that FBI and police have told them this is legal. There's nothing we're doing that is not legal. And in fact, I put in, because one of the things I started doing when all of this started happening was I started doing a lot of FOIA requests, you know, Freedom of Information Act requests. Mm -hmm. One of the things I did was I wrote to the Massachusetts um, Fusion Center and I asked them, because by this time I'd done some research, I had read Dr. Nick Bakage's work and he's done a whole bunch of investigative journalism in this area and he's one of the people in fact who discovered that um, research into non-lethal weapons, that's directed energy weapons, used to be just classified but then began to be shared with the Department of Justice as well. So they began to do joint research on non-lethal weapons, and the Department of Justice was going to be using two kinds of non-lethal weapons. One was public domain that they would um, openly talk about, and the other was classified that they were going to run with the Department of Defense, and that they were going to keep under wraps. And so I wrote to them, and perhaps it was stupid of me, but I wrote to them and I said, you know, can you tell me what kind of, and I, uh, clearly I used the wrong terminology, but I said what kind of non-lethal weapons um, are being used on the streets in Massachusetts. Um, later on I was talking to, you know, other activists and researchers amongst yeah. us, and they told me what the words you should have used are surveillance devices, because that's how they are hiding this. Right. You know, they are using these deadly, barbaric, grotesque, inhumane directed energy devices, which are shooting high-powered microwaves at people, which are shooting x-rays at people, which are shooting gamma rays at people, you know, which are shooting lasers and masers at people. They are using these deadly weapons in your local police station, from your local police station, but well hidden as surveillance devices, as physical surveillance 
So they can use this microwave radiation, you know, hitting your various organs. Um, they can um, they can do anything they like as long as they don't, you know, fess up to it. Right. So they're, they're literally hiding it. So in any case, the only the only answer I got back from the mass fusion center. By the way, I got that answer back from the mass state police, and they told me that they were the head of the fusion center. So apparently, the state police is the head of the fusion center. So these guys wrote back to me and said, we cannot divulge this information for reasons of public safety. Wow. So it's like, yes, I'm interested in public safety. I'm trying to find out what you're doing here. Right. You know, and I'm trying to alert people to what you're using on them. So it's absurd. So you see, this is like saying national security, public safety, we can't tell you. Right. So, 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 so I didn't get anywhere with that. And I also put in a FOIA to the CIA asking them had they gotten any informed consent for any of their experimentation. And they gave me one of their Glomar responses. We can't confirm, we can't deny, you know, stonewalling and nonsense. Right. So, so I actually wrote that up and I just, um, I, I wrote it up exactly as they said it to me. You know, basically I just said, the CIA cannot confirm informed consent in any, or in any classified human experimentation that may be ongoing. Right. And, you know, we know that classified human experimentation is indeed ongoing. Right. I think so, it's... Sorry. I, think... I kind of went far away from my own story. But, <laughs> so, um, where was I? So, in any case, so going back to that school play and looking at this guy, and I kind of... Uh, yeah, it was him, you know, total informant, total thug. So, uh, but what can I do about it? It's like a suspicion. What can I do about it, you know? So, um, I did ask Sinead, the woman who was the treasurer. I sent her an email and asked her, did you talk to the school board about this? You know, did you talk to the president of the school board? Do you know that I have been hit? Do you know that I've been targeted? Do you know, and all of this started after that conversation we had, she did not respond to that email. So, and it's really funny because her daughters are friends of my daughter and have, you know, continue to be friends. They don't, they don't see each other all the time, but they do see each other on occasion. And there's this weird thing. So I'll tell you what happened after that. So after I was hit, that entire school was radicalized. I saw characters oh. who were obviously non-school related people showing up at the school and after that they started to like stand in the door and stare at me, like surveil me, each time I went there to drop my daughter off or to pick her up, right? Yeah. Um, they all started to do some weird color coding and you know, the color coding they do frequently is they wear red and black a lot. But they also start picking up colors from you, what colors you are wearing, and they start repeating it. So they started doing this, the entire school, all the moms, these moms, who used to be my friends, some of these moms were, were my friends, literally turned on me overnight, and then they started tracking me with their cell phones. So as I'm driving up and sitting in line waiting for, you know, my, to pick up my daughter at three o'clock, I've got a mom in front of me and a mom in behind me, pointing a cell phone and tracking. And each time they're able to track accurately, then I'm hit. Because what else started happening was, strange cars began coming and parking in our parking lot, you know, with using them and hitting me. So every single mom over there, and the dads as well, and then they, they would make a big show of surveilling me. They would stand in front of me and hold their cell phones out to you know. They did this frequently. They did this all the time. Literally, at whether it was just daily pickups or you know, at some kind of school social event, they, they would stand in front of me and do this. So all of this extreme rudeness, extreme evil, and also I began to figure out they were recording conversations. You know, so and I found out later because I did some research on this, and again I wrote an article about it. It's on my website. The FBI had something called consensual monitoring. And what they call consensual monitoring is if one party says it's okay to record and I'll record. So basically, <laughs> that's what's been happening. 
So what, what, what they imagine is consensual monitoring is just coerced one party consent right. to record it. So that's been going on as well. You know, so these moms are recording conversations, pointing cell phones, absolute joke. And at various times I sent them emails, I said, I explained to them stuff that's going on. I said, you really shouldn't be taking part in this, taking part in this because you are actually harassing somebody. Oh, and at the same time, what else happened was defamation and slander campaigns started all around me, both in the school among moms and in my neighborhood. And I don't know, apparently a very favorite ploy of these um, defamation and slanderers, defamators and slanderers, is to go around saying that you're gay. Oh. So you're gay and you're sort of, um, not just gay, but you're sort of maybe sort of a predator gay or you're really up for a good time or God knows what. But I'll tell you what was really, really bizarre was a lot of women started coming along to me. And these are women that I knew, and I found it hysterical. These were moms. <laughs> these were the moms of my daughter's friends. And they were literally giving me signals and just sort of pulling out the stops, trying to give me these nonverbal signals. And I would just like look at them in absolute horror. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and just observe. And, you know, write about it because that's what I do. I write and um, and obviously never respond to their overtures, right. including my neighbor. Uh. I had a neighbor next door, you know, this, this young woman, Irish American woman, very nice family, three kids coming over and, you know, giving me the signal. I thought it was an absolute joke. So that's one, one way that they are defaming me. Yeah. Another way that they are doing it is they're going around. I mean, if you're a female, it's very easy to tell people this person is a prostitute. Oh. And I had, yeah, and apparently yeah. with men, the thing they like to do is to call men pedophiles. And a lot yeah. of men have spoken to me about this, yeah. you know, to be honest. It, it's just devastating. It is so sad. And I did not know the neighbor just directly here next door, who, by the way, now is very busy. He's totally under contract, he's had so many house renovations, new cars, and he's got the whole of his basement, I think, outfitted. I can literally record radiation from his house all the time. And he also, he, his friends are working with these characters, whether they are DIA or, you know, local military or who knows what, but his friends show up and they've had conversations because the houses are pretty close. I've actually heard these conversations. Pointing the cell phone at me, like in the direction of a house and saying, oh, she's right there. Uh, yeah, you're right, man, she's right there. So it's like, excuse me, am I being tracked or am I not being tracked? Geez. You know? So constantly recording me when I'm outside and he's had his entire house outfitted with antennas, with microwave transmitters, generators and so forth and um so one of the so when i found out he he's he was used to having lots of parties with lots of people and i heard all of a sudden i'm in my backyard i'm on my deck i'm tending to my plants at summertime i look across and everybody in his yard is looking at me like the entire bunch of kids and you know young families out there looking at me and one of the women says Oh, she's a night walker. <laughs> so, and it did not register for me in, in, you know, for a minute what and who they were referring to, but they were referring to me. So this is a story that had, that's been going around. You know, and I remember very early seeing people from the local fusion center coming and taking this guy in their cars to wherever, to their meetings and coming back. And then all of them laughing and friendly and socializing. So literally, the fusion center people are, are socializing with the people in neighborhoods. And they are setting up contracts and they are bribing and giving money. And, you know, they're creating these connections. And then they are turning them against people like me. You know, sure. the outspoken person who's become the target of the local fusion center. And the local Satanists, and the local Freemasons, right. and the local, you know, everyone else. So, 
basically, and also the local experimentee who is bringing in a lot of money to the county, you know. Um, and they are telling lies, and they are spreading these lies, and they're having the neighbors spread these lies. So this is, this is essentially what's going on. And then this gives them a, um, an excuse, legally again, to surveil, to keep an eye on this person. Because, so, you know, there's multiple stories. This person is mentally unstable. This person is a violent extremist. I mean, if you look right. at some of the documents from, you know, these, um, from the police, from, I think, from Virginia State Police, there was a document. Um, the FBI has put out something in California as well. If you look at the list of people that they think are worthy of surveillance, it's a very long list. And it's, you know, it includes people who are religious, people who say they believe in the Constitution, people who speak about individual rights and liberties. Right. You know, people who talk about freedom a lot, people who mention the word sovereignty. There's a whole list. So, we are no longer living in a democracy. We are totally living in a kind of a Nazi situation currently. We are totally living in, you know, totalitarian fascism that is seeking to hide its face. Mm -hmm. You know, and seeking to maintain a facade of democracy. I think you're right. I, I want a couple questions. What, are, what became of your husband? Is he still with you? Because the normal strategy is to break up the couple, lose the friends. Yes, uh, yes. And believe me, that is exactly what they've been working on. And I also think my husband is EBS, which is electronically brain stimulated, yeah. to disbelieve me and to, to, to not take me seriously. Right. And you know, all that stuff. Um, my husband and I were together for many, many years before we had our child. You know, she was born 12 years after we were married. Um, so, and we met shortly after college. So, to a, to a certain extent, we have a pretty strong bond. But certainly they tried very well to, to break us up. Um, the first week he was very supportive. He helped me with shielding, although after, after the first week, maybe the second or third week. Um, but after that, you know, he called in my sister, who's a doctor, and my cousin, who's a public health master's and so forth, and they all decided that I was a psychiatric case and I was having delusions about being attacked by microwaves and so right. forth. And uh, they ended up, you know, I ended up talking to a family friend who's a psychiatrist, and my husband also actually openly deceived me and took me to see a child psychiatrist, a woman who turned out to be a child psychiatrist. And I ended up, because I'm, as you can tell, quite talkative, <laughs> ended, up, ended up telling them exactly what was going on. And I said, you know, I am being hit with electromagnetic vibrations that are coming at me from the outside. Right. And from what I read, this, these are government programs. You know, this is covert government harassment. So as you say the words covert government harassment, so you see the psychiatrist brings out their, um, their little DSM, you know, their Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which says, these people imagine they are being harassed by the government, yeah. and they are delusional. <laughs> so, you know, that's essentially what they do. And so that's what my uh, family friend here did. Yeah. And the other thing, oh, this is my pet subject, by the way. The other thing is mainstream media, the absolute treachery, betrayal, malfeasance, yellow journalism, hack writing, and positive evil emanating from mainstream media. You know, from writers like Sharon Weinberger yeah. of the Washington Post, Mike McFate of New York Times, various other jokers from the Daily Beast, from Mother Jones, from, you know, from magazines and newspapers which once had a name and which unfortunately a lot of people still believe. You know, right. they read it in the New York Times and think, oh, this is the truth. This is died in the world reality. Except the New York Times and the Washington Post have now become outposts of government propaganda. Sure. They are printing absolute truth. And they are printing this at the behest of the CIA who is seeking very hard 
along with the military, along with the Pentagon, to keep directed energy weapons and neuro weapons, which are mind control weapons, very advanced, highly sophisticated neuro weaponry, which has taken 50 years to develop, or more than 50 years, and which is now very, very advanced. We are striving to keep all of this completely under wraps because it's like the coup de grace. They've got this like incredible right. weapon that, you know, they've thrown the wool over everyone's eyes. People don't think these weapons exist. And we've got, you know, I was going to say liars, but yeah, writers, hack writers who are liars, to lie for us and say, oh, that's too far in the future, that's pure science fiction. You know, this is such a joke oh, yeah. to hear them use this word science <clears throat> fiction now about neuroweaponry in this day and age. If you do the slightest bit of research about neuroweaponry now, the slightest bit of research about behavior modification weaponry, you will discover hundreds of patterns oh absolutely you know they're they're out there those patterns are out there and they're not even new they, they're patterns from the 1970s onward right you know so um patterns that can put voices into people's heads that can put emotions into people's heads right you know and so forth um convert people's thinking and so forth so if you actually go into researching this, you begin to realize what a lie we are being fed. And we are being fed this lie by mainstream media. And because these lies exist, and because media prints these lies, you have psychiatrists running to the New York Times and saying, literally, this is what Shuba, this, this friend of mine, right. the psychiatrist, said to me. She said, you know, I did look up things like you said, and I didn't find a single article from, uh, from you know, a known newspaper, a leading publication right. on the subject, like you're saying. <clears throat> I only saw these John Doe articles. Right. So you see, alternative media is being dismissed as John Doe articles, and the New York Times is being revered and honored as yeah. the ultimate authority, yes. which is absolute nonsense, because they're printing lies. So I think one of the things that actually we face right now is this landscape, this panorama of lies that has been, you know, set in place by the leading newspapers of our time. And that's something we need to completely raise that landscape down. You know, it's like saying, you know, it's like the Manhattan Project, for instance, right? It was kept under wraps for so many years. And then you had Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You had those bombs dropped, uh -huh. which as we all know, there was no reason to drop those bombs. They just wanted to drop those bombs and they went ahead and dropped those bombs, right? So, but after those bombs were dropped, nobody could deny that the bombs existed, that, you know, the technology existed, the nuclear technology existed. So what you have over here now is the Manhattan Project still under wraps. Right. We, so they're using these incredible weapons in us but they are keeping it so closed and so tied up and so wrapped up that the average person in the street, the average educated person, you know, my sister's a doctor and her friends are all doctors. I don't know what they read, but, you know, this is what they read. They read The Guardian, The Independent, The, sure. uh, the New York Times, The Washington Post. They, they are living in a world that is complete. They're totally unawakened. You know, you and I are, we, we focus on the positive and we look around and we say the world is awakening. But actually, there's a large portion of the world that is not awakening. And part of the reason for it not being awakening, actually, is the use of these weapons, these weapon systems. Because what these weapon systems are doing, can do, also, is to mind control the masses. I mean, sure. literally, you know, with... Um, ELFs and through HARP, they can literally blanket whole areas sure. with frequencies, you know, that keep people passive, placid, docile, and that also keep them unthinking, uncritical, unquestioning, keep them believing in things like the New York Times right. and so forth. Oh, and NPR and Democracy Now! Sure. You know, let's put them all in the mix. PBS, you know, yes. all of them. They've all failed us. Completely and absolutely. And to this day, they will not touch the subject of targeting. 
Well, yeah, I, because I, it's like the ultimate taboo. But to me, I think it's more. I think that the, what we need to do is move past the emphasis on targeted individual because that is a term that comes from them. You know. Right. There, that, is it? That, is it? I didn't know that. I well, I, I I think it is. I think that's how it is because you know basically now you'll say uh, now you'll hear people saying we call ourselves targeted individuals. Well, why do we call ourselves targeted individuals? Because that, that's the language that other people are using, yeah. you see? So, clearly, we are people who are being wrongfully targeted, wrongfully surveilled, and wrongfully experimented on, you know? And wrongfully hammered with microwave radiation, continuously. I mean, literally, there have been occasions when... I know Catherine wrote me an email last night, and she, she had a terrible episode. She was... Her arm was hit, and she said it was. She was in extreme pain. Um, so we, many of us, have had episodes, indications of like that, of extreme pain. So we are literally being attacked. We are being attacked with military-grade weaponry that is being kept secret. But we are being attacked inside our homes. You know, and we may be attacked under all sorts of covers. They can call it surveillance. They can call it military deception, they can call it experimentation, they can call it whatever they want, but the reality, the fact on the ground is we are being attacked with military-grade weaponry yeah. by agencies of the government. Yes. And that's the fact. You know, and that's what we need to focus on. We need to get the word out that, one, this is the age of electronic warfare. Yes. And this electronic weapon warfare is being carried out and it's being hidden. We need to let people know how sophisticated these weapons are, how well, how to what level they've been developed. And you know, there are two kinds of weapons here. There's directed energy weaponry and then there's neural weaponry. So you've got the weapons that, you know, get into your brain and get into your nervous system and you've also got the weapons that, um, that just hit you, you know, that literally shoot at you, just like a gun can shoot at you. You know, physically. You're physically being shot at, but just with an invisible pulse of radiation, you know, or with a maser. So a laser or a maser. I mean, I have had occasions, I was walking in the in our neighborhood one day where I was hit in the back of my head, and it literally felt like a physical spear. And this guy in, in, in he, well, he was driving an Amazon truck, he pulled out. I turned around and looked, and it was this guy in an Amazon truck. He pulled out, and he actually had a gall to come we were walking, my daughter and I were walking the dog, and he pulled up in front of me and he waited. He paused his van he, right in front of me, waiting for me to get in front of him again. So he could hit me again. And literally, I was hit by a laser, in other words. I was hit by a horizontal laser emanating from his van. Um, obviously, I did not. I waited and waited for him to, to leave. Sure. I did not have my camera with me at that time. I just waited for him to leave. Um, and he did eventually, but it was so obvious, you know, that he would pull up in front of us and just stop. So, so the, the thing I want to tell people also is, it's not just DIs, it's not just targeted individuals. If there are people in vans, and there are, and in cars, in SUVs, in minivans, in sedans, driving around with these incredibly dangerous, deadly weapons in their trunks, and in the, in the front of their cars sometimes, but very often also in the truck. I'm hit very frequently when I'm driving by somebody pulling in front of me and you know, directing radiation at me from in front, which is probably from the back of their car. Um, so if there are these, and I see so many of them, there are some that are very obvious. And there was an article in GQ a while ago talking about X-ray vans in New York. So literally vans carrying yeah. antennas and transmitters to, to shoot x-rays at people. Right. I mean, in what reality can this be acceptable? <laughs> you know? Seriously. I mean, where, have we entered hell? Yeah. Have we entered, did we enter the gates of hell and nobody told me? So, literally, this is how insane these lunatics who have um, approved this weaponry for use on the streets are. They have approved the use of X-rays. They have approved the use of microwaves, of millimeter waves, 
of lasers, masers, on people, on humans, you know? So they have approved the use of deadly weaponry on human bodies and human brains. And trust me, this is not just those who are targeted. If that weaponry is in these vans today, I can assure you it is being used on everybody. Because right. it is very easy to point at somebody's ankle as you are sitting in a doctor's office. Right. It is very easy to point through the window and give you gallstones or a sudden pain in your kidney, right. give you a sudden heart attack. Oh, and heart attacks, by the way. I've been hitting my heart so often like, over the last two years. It is so easy for them to do it. They just have to point and hit. And people have died of heart attacks, you know, many sure. people. Sure. So, you know, these sudden induced heart attacks. So, um, but you, you see, that's what they're doing. Actually, I read something recently. Um, you know, Dr. Rani Kilda's book. Do you know her book, Bright Light on Black Shadows? No, I don't know that book. Yeah, it's an excellent book. What's it called? So, this is, this is it. Bright Light on and, Dark Shadows. Okay. Yeah, Bright Light on Black Shadows. Thanks. And you know, Dr. Rani Lokanan Kilda, Dr. Rani Lena Lokanan Kilda, was just the most incredible woman. She was, um, you know, a medical doctor and a surgeon. She was, I think, um, she's no, re no, she's Finnish, but she was, um, I think she was like, she had a very, she had a very public um, title. She was the Finnish um, chief medical officer or something, chief medical surgeon. Something she did was she did a massive amount of research on directed energy weapons, and she spent a lot of time going to conferences, going to military conferences in Europe and Russia and I think in the US as well. And so she learned a great deal and she published everything she knew. Um, and she has had a lot of people talk to her and, and tell her and give her information. So one of the things that I read actually was that um, there was, there was and there's this whole conversation is reproduced in the book, a woman who worked as a nanny for a Norwegian couple um, kind of disclosed that she was working as a double agent for the intelligence agencies. And so she has this long conversation with um, Rowney's friend and says that basically the intelligence agencies, they are not using guns anymore. They are yeah. not using, you know, they are not using overt weaponry yeah. to repress people. But what they are using is sickness. They are inducing sickness and illness. And they are doing it with these directed energy weapons. And they've been doing it for a very long time. And she's talking about the Scandinavian countries, you know. But literally, this is the same thing all over the world. And in fact, you know, I don't know to what extent you've talked about the Illuminati and, and so forth and the Freemasons on your show. We, we have you know, a very sophisticated audience. So go for it. <laughs> Thank you. So since I've started reading about the, the Freemasons and the Illuminati and so forth, one of the things I've started to notice is that every time they hit me, they like to advertise it, you know. So I'll give you two examples. One was, um, I think in the summer of 2014, I was, I was on a scheduled trip to New York to go give a reading at a Pan American event. I think it was um, Voices for the World or something like that. So just before that, just before that week when I was due to leave, I started to see, as I was driving, people limping everywhere in front of me. I mean, literally, it was absurd. People on crutches, people limping, people suddenly holding their knee on, on escalators and walking. Whoa. And then that week, as I'm lying in bed, I'm hit by a helicopter directly over my head on my knee. I mean, it was an intense hit. It was extremely painful. My knee really swelled up. And it happened several times after that. So it happens helicopters fly. I didn't really know how to shield very well at the time. So I got hit very badly. Both my knees were hit, but in particular one of my knees. I think it was my left one. So I was literally in a state of extreme pain. 
and I had to go, you know, take the train and walk about in New York and so forth. And here I am in extreme pain. And I was going to stay with a with a friend who was, who lived in a walk up. So I had to literally walk up five flights of stairs to get to her apartment. Yes. <laughs> so in any case, I made the trip. I was determined. I was going to make the trip, and I made the trip. I went to New York. I did my reading, etc. But there was. But this was an example of the kind of obstacles in my way, and and the kind of advertising of the obstacle, you know. Um, and then uh, just recently, I think, oh yes, I would see these vans drive in front of me, and this is why this relates to to what we were just talking about the the Norwegian war. Um, these vans that said eco-sensitive pest control um, solutions, and then I would see vans with Terminatrix, you know, pest terminators. Oh. So they drive these in front of me like a kind of a little heads up here. We consider right. you a pest, and this is our way of exterminating you pests from the face of the earth. You know, wow. so we're going to hit you with with weapons that are invisible. That when you start talking about them, you're going to be put down as delusional, paranoid, schizophrenic, etc., etc. So you know, people don't just become schizophrenic overnight. And yet you have psychiatrists, you have these clueless and absolutely like, you know, slavish psych psychiatrists coming out and naming women in their 40s and 50s who, who mentioned they're being hit with radiation, naming them delusional and schizophrenic. I think this is, right. this should be, you know, this is, this is like, they should be like divested of your licenses immediately. <laughs> right. Well, this is the, this is the profession that, that publishes the DSM. And yes, exactly. Now they're making pedophilia a uh, a choice. Oh uh, yeah, so, I heard about so, that. So so there, that's a totally yeah, that's a that. totally corrupted organization that works for probably the pharmaceutical companies, but it's mm -hmm. but it's all wound together. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I want you to have plenty of time to talk about <laughs> what you're going through, because I think the people need to get it. Need to get that you're not crazy. You're being gaslighted, of course. Yes. Uh, they're trying yeah. to make you that way, but you're not mm -hmm. crazy, and you mm -hmm. certainly are uh, are experiencing something that we need we need to be aware of. And we, I don't mean everybody. And mm -hmm. you, let me, um, since you uh, got targeted. Mm -hmm. I bet your awareness of what's going on in the world. I mean, you started yes. noticing chemtrails. Yes. You kind of popped awake. Completely. It, it happened overnight. And literally, I was not aware. I had no idea about chemtrails. I mean, looking back, I'm realizing now, yeah, I did see those funny lines earlier. But it did hit me, you know. It, it didn't make me think, what on earth are they? Yeah. Um, you know, so... We lived in Vermont in 2010, and they would hit us hard right before a rain or a snowstorm. Oh, and so nice. we collected the rain. Oh. And, and it, uh, we paid to have it uh, assayed, and uh, it had 250 times the normal amount of aluminum in water. Oh and there shouldn't have been any in water. But Man. we turned around and we tried to tell people in our town now, this is mm -hmm. a very liberal town. I thought they would be open-minded. Yeah. Nobody was open-minded. We couldn't, yeah. we couldn't wake them up. But, but you <clears throat> were, I don't know, put on a fast track. Exactly. To wake you up. Put it that way. <clears throat> yeah. And from my, uh, from my observation, especially from my, uh, my standpoint, with you and Kathy and Catherine, and Eric, uh, what a unique group of people. Uh, everybody, I'm a consciousness guy. My PhD is in consciousness mm -hmm. studies. All of you uh, come from an extremely high level. I can tell by the way you talk, and the way you express yourself, and the way you see humanity. Also, uh, to the person, you're very intelligent, very talented, very creative. I mean, uh, we interviewed several years ago a person named Charlie Seven. And if you mm -hmm. go back, yes. do you know who that is? Yes, <clears throat> I do. Yeah. 
Mm. Horrible things they did to that woman and, and are still doing to this day. Mm. It's a special group they picked. They, did they pick them because all of a sudden they needed to be awake? Because this is an awakening process. All of a sudden you, you, you're exposed to things, you investigate things. It's an awakening process. Are they doing this because you guys have so much talent and your ego is in front of the herd? Can I say you're mm -hmm. a little bit more seeing things from a little high, higher perspective than most people would be? Are they seeing that because they want to shut that down or are they are they doing it because they want to shoot that up? Um, no, we want to shut it down. I, I cannot imagine that this is in any way a benevolent project. Yeah, what's I, being done? To, what's being done to us is pure malice. It's pure malevolence. Yeah, and clearly, it's people who stand out for whatever reason, you know, who are being shut down. And I have actually read the stories of and communicated with various people who have been targeted. And one of the commonalities they all share is that we are people of high integrity and high conscience. Yeah. And, you know, people who speak out, whether they spoke out and talked about, you know, corruption at the city level or corruption in, you know, their particular organization, whether they, you know, pointed to something, whether they reported a crime, they, they unfortunately crossed paths literally with a criminal, uh -huh. you know. And so you can't report crime to a criminal, apparently, because the criminal just wants to shut you down. And right. currently, unfortunately, we have criminals in power and they are everywhere in power. Right. They are most definitely in our security and intelligence agencies. You know, this, this word intelligence is both overrated and absolutely inaccurate right. Right. <laughs> in application to these agencies. You're exactly right. It's, because these guys are common criminals. They, they are thugs, you know, thugs in suits is what they are. And whoever, and, go ahead. I, I don't want to interrupt. And, and they're pursuing secrecy. <clears throat> People who pursue secrecy, I mean, as you can tell, looking at the history of any secret society, any secret organization, are people who are doing evil things in secret. I mean, look at all the stuff that's coming out currently with, you know, Peter Gate and Peter Gate. Sure. And all these politicians involved in these child sex rings, pedophilia rings. I mean, how horrific can you get? And I know it's worse than that, even. You know, it's they're, they're killing, they're killing children. They're, oh, they're absolutely, absolutely. Engaging in these satanic rites and they are killing babies and drinking the blood of babies. I mean, how disgusting, how there are no words, you know, to describe exactly. that level of depravity. That's not even human. That's exactly That's not right. Human, the, you know? From the past, the, well, what, I, what I spoke with with Catherine was about mostly their control system is the triangle. Right, right. That's how they've can. That's how they did the the, the British Empire. It was all, mm -hmm. well, uh, spreading over uh, the entire consciousness of the world, uh, and the fact that this um, uh, governments and those control systems are being seen through. The, yeah. A better way to control people is the way they're controlling you, through corrupting all the ambient society. To, con Correct. to yes. control you, it's it's their. Yes. I think it's their new plan. Yes. And just to bring in an unrelated thing, and I, I mm -hmm. know that you're going to be able to deal with this because just because you're uh, awake, uh, the Schumann residence, which yes. is the vibration of the planet, has yes. doubled in the last couple of years. We are yes. the planet, and I would say in turn us are vibrating at a higher frequency. Their game, I think their game is about up. And so there are people uh, that so. can, that are, that are waking up and that are able to lead this, um, I don't know, what can I say? It's, a rev it's not a revolution because it's not revolving. It's a change. It's, it's mm -hmm. a coming out of this dark, dark stage into another stage and they've got to shut it down. That's yeah. why most people on the planet, I think, are very corruptible. They're able to be influenced like your uh, your neighbors were. Right, yeah. But there are... But you know the Go neighbors, ahead. I have another theory about the neighbors. Okay. Because this is, how they are, this is how they are actually controlling communities. 
You know, Americans love badges. They love people in authority. Yes. You know, a guy shows up at your door and says he's FBI. Americans just fall over. So, unfortunately, and when I say Americans, I literally mean... Westerners. The Joe, you know, yeah. not just Westerners. It's like pretty much everybody. This is how we've been acculturated. Yeah. to look up to external authority, you know? And this is possibly true in every culture on the planet, actually. But a guy shows up with a badge, you say, and actually my dad is very similar. He, he would say, oh, the government is doing this. We yeah. can't, you know, we can't yeah. get involved. We have to let them do whatever they want. So that, I think, is part of what is going on. You have all these neighbors thinking, you know, this is what the government's doing. I can't get involved. They want us to point cell phones at Ramola D. We'll do that because ah. they are the FBI and who is she? You know, she just moved here on the street two years ago. So, so I think that's what's going on. I think what's going on is the hold that these agencies, these government agencies have on communities is not to be sneezed at. Because and it's, it's, this is a form of both terrorizing the community and co-opting the community, you know, because of this acculturation of looking up to external authority. So nobody thinks to say the DHS is picking on Ramola. And you know, nobody right. in the street, by the way, the first two years that I was hit right now, this year it's really been cut back, but the first two years that I was hit, there were planes here all the time. Whoa. It was very clear I was being hit, both from a plane and I was the target of experimentation from planes. And I put in a lot of lawyers about planes. And you can go to muckrock.com and see my literally my one year long correspondence with the Federal Aviation Authority asking them what the heck these planes are all about. And ultimately they said, yes, it's true. The Quincy administration knows about it, but we can't tell you anything about it, you know. So and then I appealed their declaration. They couldn't tell me. And that appeal is just sitting on ice. They're not doing anything about it. So, um, so in other words, you know, the, the entire neighborhood is perfectly aware there are planes and helicopters targeting the person in this house, you know. So you, can't, you cannot hide planes and helicopters that constantly come by, right. surf the yard, and, you know, fly over directly this house. So, um, so I think what's happening is it's a combination. They're being terrorized. I think they're perfectly aware at this point that there's human experimentation going on with neuroweaponry or directed energy weaponry. But because you have neighbors like this guy next door, David Mock, on this side, and the guy on that, on the, on the other side, Matthew Norton, and his father, Richard Norton, you know, a Vietnam veteran, who park their cars in the driveway and who are keeping dues in their driveway so I can, so I'm hit by them as I'm sitting in my own living room you know, because it abuts the driveway. Um, so these guys are using directed energy weapons now on their neighbor. They have gone one step beyond being terrorized and co-opted to being acquiescent and participatory, you know, in these, in these crimes of assault, assault, which are in their eyes not being seen as crimes of assault. Because you see, According to them, I have been characterized as a threat to national security, a threat to the government. They've either bought the Kool-Aid or they've decided to buy the Kool-Aid, you know. So they haven't moved out, they haven't put up a fight, they've just decided, okay, we'll use these weapons on Ramallah too, we'll just go ahead and do what you want. So you see, I think it's a little more complex than just that they are, um, that they're being used I think they are, um, they're complicit and they're giving in, but in a sense it's almost like what else can they do kind of thing, you know? So, it, that, so we've been taken over in other words, you know, our communities have been taken over by this um, sort of this regime of authoritarianism and this regime of evil. Right. We just cut out here. Yeah. We just cut out for a second. So, um, yeah, so, it, yeah, and I, I, I look at television, <clears throat> the greatest mass mind control device on the planet as being part of this, mm -hmm. you know, that trains us what's oh. good and what's evil. And uh, oh, they're all acquiescing to this uh, breakaway, breakaway civilization. I think that that's, 
it was used in terms of uh, space travel and this, but there, uh, there certainly is a breakaway civilization. I mean, we did a report probably close to a year ago about uh, levitation devices. Oh, wow. And the first uh, presentation of a fully functioning levitation device was made to the government in 1860. Of course, the government mm -hmm. said they didn't want it, the military said they didn't want it, but the secret government mm -hmm. took it. And oh, the, way science, the way science works is you take an invention and you can build mm -hmm. on that invention. That's the way science works. It's like the wheel. If you don't have the wheel, you can't get the truck, you know. But, and so I think this is, this is true with uh, mind control, uh, definitely transportation and energy devices, and, and on and on and on. So, there, so we're dealing with a civilization or a, 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 a force, right? I call it a, a dark force, that's mm -hmm. so ahead of us that they're, they're really trying to head us off at the pass as we start to mm -hmm. wake up to what they're doing to us. That's correct, yes. And, and they have all these tools. I mean, they have this huge apparatus of the intelligence agencies, and now they've got these fusion centers all over America. And if you read Doug Valentine, you know, he talks about the Phoenix Doug program Valentine. that was run in, in Vietnam, which they, are totally, they have already totally replicated over here, you know, with the fusion centers and with these weapons, these directed energy weapons. Um, so they have as apparatus, they have these mechanisms, they have not just a corruptible law enforcement, they have corrupt law enforcement. Absolutely. Who are, who are completely a part of it. Absolutely. And you know, this harkens back again to the prevalence of secret societies and the prevalence of Satanism right. in law enforcement and among the FBI and so forth. Um, all of this shocking stuff. So they have this mechanism in place. But, you know, coming back to something that you have talked about, actually, and something that Catherine Horton talked about, in a sense, again, is what we're looking at is deep capture. We're talking about systems yeah, deep, deep capture. capture. You know, those wonderful terms that you both came up with. Um, I think that we, you know, the educated populace, those of us who are both being hit and not being hit currently, need to, at this point in time, begin to show the mirror, begin to start showing a mirror to what has happened. If we do not start showing, holding up that mirror, the rest of the people around us are not going to be able to see because they literally are the people who are being brainwashed, mm -hmm. who have been brain entrained, you know, who are the most susceptible to the, the, the brainwashing and media washing, the programming that you get from media. So these are the people who have already been taken over. Uh -huh. And as you say, they are the people who have not awakened yet, you know. But awakening is not just awakening, because, um, you know, it seems to me a consciousness field is also some kind of muddying of the waters mm -hmm. with so much new age stuff that's come in. Right. Like, um, you know, it's all love and light and, you know, the new right. age is all about loving each other and so forth. And, Yes, yes, yes. But on the other hand, look at where we are now. You know, people are not loving each other. People are turning against each other and being instigated to turn against each other right. in communities. So we are being currently divided by forces external to us. So you have these people from the top. You know, you have these globalists, the bankers, the Rothschilds, right. Rockefellers running the intelligence agencies coming down from the top and trying to take over all the communities below and setting people against each other. So those of us who have awakened and who can see very clearly what the heck is going on, we need to start holding up that mirror yes. to them and showing the evil of what right. is going on. So before we get to love and light, I suggest that you know we start showing exactly what these creeps are doing under cover of secrecy. Absolutely. Using it's secrecy, national security, public safety. These things have to be torn down. They have to be absolutely torn down once and for all, right. for all time. Right. Secrecy is what they've governed us with. Exactly. Secrecy, the, the pyramid is a secret organization, and we have to move exactly. away from it. Also, what they've done through TV and, uh, oh, 
just the ambient society is they've legitimized uh, psychopathology and psychopathic behavior. Uh, That's right. It, it's okay. So that worship, etc. Right. If you have money, it doesn't matter how you've gotten it. It's all mm -hmm. about your having money. And it's okay yeah. to do things for the government, even though you, it's a psychopathic thing. It's okay to give people injections of vaccines, mm -hmm. even though you know it's a population yes. control. Yes. It's okay yeah. to put mercury yeah. in the vaccines. It's okay to yeah. do that stuff. I'm just putting my kid through college, you know. I'm working for whatever company because I have to put my kid through college, even though the company is contributing to this psychopathic uh, mindset. Yeah. So your neighbors are evil, easily uh, gotten to because we're living in a psychopathic cul culture. Um, That's absolutely correct. Actually, Dr. Seth Farber talks about that as well. He says, you know, he's a psychologist like, like you, I think, so um, he talks about how we are living in a psychopathic kind of situation. The entire society has been set up like that. Right. And it actually goes back to, you know, it goes back to the whole war industry and the weapons industry. You know, it goes back to how we are currently living in a situation where taxpayer money is being used to support the killing of innocents all across the world. Yes. And, and, and people are not out there protesting in the streets and saying, look, I'm not going to give my money to kill kids in Syria and kill in kids in Iraq. I, I don't want that to happen. So you see, Americans haven't done that yet. Uh, but then again, we come back to mind control. We come back to, you know, yes. um, mass mind control, both not, not just through programming through the television, but also through actual frequencies. That are being used against Americans, so so it, it's something of a, of a catch twenty two here. You know, we're living in this situation. They've they've got this um, scenario kind of tied up really tight. They're keeping people from protesting. They're keeping people from thinking clearly and from thinking critically. You know, by the use of programming right. and mind control, and they're going ahead with their war industry, with building more and more weapons, creating you know bombs, drones, planes, whatever, and selling them to people like Saudi Arabia and to Israel, you know, Absolutely. and we know what they are doing in Yemen and right. in Palestine and so forth. So, which makes every single one of us complicit, in a sense. We are, you know, it's like drinking the blood of Christ to church. It's like we become complicit in this satanic setup. Right. Because we are unable to protest, we do not say no, you know. Right. So, and I, I, I think that's, to me, I think electronic weapons are the key because when people begin to understand how um, insidious electronic weapons are. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, good. I didn't see myself, so I wondered what had happened. But anyway, never mind. I can so, see you. Oh, you can. Okay. You look great. Sorry? You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I can scarcely believe that. But in any case, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I look like hell. I wake up every morning and I've been hit all night. Oh. I look at myself in the mirror and I sort of, yeah, shudder. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so to go back to the, the, the whole war, electronic weapons. When people begin to understand that what these weapons are doing is they are literally hitting human bodies and brains, you know, mm -hmm. they can they can literally target every single nerve in your nervous system. They can target every single muscle. They can target your eyes, your nose, your your gallbladder, your liver, your heart. So when so it's almost like bringing the war very very close to human bodies. Yeah. You know, and. And because it's secretive, these are stealth weapons, just by their nature. They can be kept secret, mm -hmm. because no one can see these rays. We don't have X-ray vision as yet. That's right. So, you know, when people begin to realize that electronic weapons are deadly, they might begin to realize warfare in itself is deadly, you know. <laughs> and I know a lot of people do realize this. I mean, there are people, there are many people who are against war. And, you know, they speak out. But... Nothing is changing, right? 
The right. money's still going to the weapons industry. The money's still going to the war industry. So... Yeah, we've kind of dropped I, out of the uh, anti-war movement. It's kind of, it kind of went away under Obama. Uh, oh, yes. So, yeah. so, so that's no longer there. So we can, we can all be complicit in these psychopathic uh, attacks on other nations. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's a reason that uh, Congress will never get involved in uh, pedophilia or Pizzagate because they're all, they're corrupted. They're all involved. They are, they are it, in it. They're involved. Right. So they're involved. So it, it just seems really interesting how certain people are targeted mm. and other people are complicit. It just seems yeah. like... Um, and it, to me, it seems like it's really divided. And I, I don't look at consciousness as love and light. It's a, it's mm. a, it's a reconceptualization. And a, it, as your consciousness expands, your ability to conceptualize what's happening uh, becomes more sophisticated and more comprehensive. And it's usually driven by dilemma. It's mm -hmm. usually driven by problems. That's I mean, if you're fat and happy and you're sitting out, um, yeah. not being affected That's by anything, yeah. you'll basically die with the same level of consciousness you had when you were probably 10 years old. But right. if you're uh, faced with divorces and what you've been faced with, oh my God, and mm -hmm. what we all should be faced with because we should be empathizing with you. We should be empathizing with the people in Yemen. We should be, we yes. should be growing through that, but we're mm -hmm. not. We, we, no, I can't say we're not because I think we are, but it's just a really slow process and it's been really impeded by television, uh, yes. geoengineering, uh, yeah. and now special people that could really uh, lead Consciousness Awakening. The, the, the four or five that I'm working with, extremely mm -hmm. special people, are being hit. They're, mm -hmm. they're, so, so it seems like a, almost like a culling, almost like a, uh, you know, we're going to hit the people that are, are most able to uh, conceptualize higher, move people forward. Um, so... That, that could be true. Uh, you know, I, do you know Paul Baird of surveillanceissues.com? No, um, I don't. He's a, he's a long-standing researcher in this field and, and an activist and writer. Um, one of the things that he stresses and he said very often, and I think he's, he could be right, is that this is, this is related to eugenics. They are trying to wipe out the genes of the good people on Earth. They are literally, they are literally targeting people of conscience and integrity, and you know, after people are targeted, he's he's been in correspondence with actually thousands of DNs, mm -hmm. and he says after people are targeted, nobody is able to conceive, nobody is able to have a child. No, nope. this was my experience as well. <coughs> you're constantly shielding, you're constantly vigilant, you're constantly aware, and you know, so there there is. Uh, definitely levels of stress and levels of awareness and so forth. But the other thing is they can literally target your ovaries. They can target your, you know, reproductive Absolutely. parts. So they are taking out people. And the other the other thing they're doing, from what I understand, is they're hitting people's, you know, they're hitting your DNA. So most targets report being vibrated. They're, they're literally being remotely vibrated. The bodies are being remotely vibrated you know, in attempts to vibrate and, and mutate the DNA. So, who knows? So, <laughs> the, the, this whole story that, that this is eugenics rings very true, because partly what we are also being faced with at this time are depopulation scenarios. I mean, chemtrails yeah. are depopulation, you yeah. know, or attempts at depopulation. So just as they are raining down aerosols on people, I think what the the message that targets can give the rest of the world is they are also pointing radiation weapons at you. Right. You know, and there is it's like it's sort of a double whammy when you're hit both with radiation and with aerosols. There's some kind of um, um, 
Nick Bage talks about this really well. He t- I forget what it's called exactly, some kind of um, electron spin resonance or something, when radiation is pointed at uh, cells that are filled up with these viruses from the aerosols, yeah. the radiation helps the viruses screw into the cell walls, literally spiral into the cell walls, and create the infection, you know, whatever it is. So, and this is why, for instance, last week when I was hit continuously in my face on all sides of my head with high part microwave radiation and aerosols bringing down on me, I got sick immediately, you know. So, Jeez. so I think that's unfortunately the reality that we are being faced with today and, and people don't even know about it because it's not in the New York Times. Right. Well, well, we we try to do everything we can to get it out. It goes on YouTube, and oh, I'm sure yes. it gets passed our passed around yeah. social media. And six, uh, well, when we started working with uh, Charlie Seven, it just seemed like a. I mean, even for me, who this woman is, she is uh, lovely. We started mm-hmm. working with her, and I got very sick. Oh, and, dear, I'm so uh, sorry. She put everything that she was going through aside. This is this is true with, I think this is true with um, TIs that I've worked with. They put themselves aside, and she got me in touch with a, her herbalist, and oh. um, she was working with me and the herbalist to get me better before we could interview her, because she was so. You see, uh, I think as you rise to these higher levels of consciousness, you become an anti-psychopath. You mm-hmm. think about yourself and helping other people, yes. the opposite of a psychopath. Psychopath is oh. all about him or herself, who cares about everybody else. If you get sensitive to what they're going through, it'll keep you from functioning. <coughs> Expanded levels of consciousness, I see as uh, Looking out for the other guy, wanting to mm-hmm. wanting them to know what's going on, wanting uh, them to know what's going on in Yemen, wanting them to know, you know, that that Trump is still uh, ground striking people in the Middle East, you know, wanting them, wanting them to know. So it, it's a, yeah. they're, they're, so they're they're hitting these beautiful people, um, and it's it's really a shame. We all should be aware and standing up. Uh, against this this atrocity, and this is just hitting the same time that uh, this uh, child trafficking thing is really becoming into the oh, forefront, yeah. and uh, they're, they're, they stem back to the same organization. I mean, it's all the spy organizations; they're all running it. Yeah. Who they're directed by, I don't know, but. Uh, well, I, I presume it goes back to to those guys that it, people talk about, right? The bankers and the Illuminati and. Yeah, right. Those super wealthy families, some, I think it's 13 families at the top or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 13 families. The committee of 300. And there might be, uh, you know, forces above that that's that's driving them. Oh, forward. right. Yeah, well, that's right. When you go into that whole story of, you know, the aliens or the reptilians or whoever. Running well, planet. it could be, or it could be just uh, homegrown evil right here on the. Oh, right yes, on exactly. The I mean, this is. This is evil enough. I mean, these are humans doing this, you know, right. behaving in these non-human ways, you know, worshipping demons, drinking blood, all this stuff, right. you know, and trafficking in children. It's just horrifying. This this is not okay. This should, um, uh, I, I don't know how, resonate or somehow spur people to come back to their humanity. Yeah. I mean, when these types of things are being done, this, this isn't human to human. Human beings <laughs> don't act like this. Mm-mm. But you're right. I think, in a sense, at least one hopes that what's being that's what but that what is unfolding currently, with more and more evidence of this child trafficking and this pedophilia and these child sex rings, as the stuff is coming out and as people are beginning to understand that there are people, you know, working inside these secret societies and actually inside the intelligence agencies as well. There are factions inside the intelligence agencies 
who are engaging in these extremely dark, extremely evil, extremely malevolent practices. You know, it's only to be hoped that perhaps in conjunction with the Schumann resonance going up, you know, and with all those CMEs that we're getting from the sun, uh -huh. um, you know, it's, it's only to be hoped that perhaps more people will begin to awaken and begin to see that what we are doing by um, joining in, by participating, by acquiescing, by consenting, that they begin to see that they, that, that, that is sort of being an accomplice and being right. you know, somebody who is participating in these crimes and perhaps people will begin to step away from that and perhaps they'll start saying no and perhaps they'll find a pl different place to be in than right there next door color coding and pointing cell phones to post radiation at your neighbor you know right uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how that will change otherwise. I mean, I really think ultimately it, it, it has to come down to sort of looking literally to the heavens for help. You know, we need some spiritual help here because people are being mind controlled. People are being uh, mind suppressed and mind repressed. And at the same time, they are being terrorized on the ground by these intelligence agencies, right. you know. Who, who should not exist. And this is why I'm so keen on like showing a mirror, naming names, putting their photos up online, you know, name the names of every single one of these characters in these intelligence agencies who have got the gall, the supreme hubris, and, and the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, to, to experiment on humans, to, to um, justify it and rationalize it to themselves, you know, as perfectly okay for national security. It's not national security to bio-robotize somebody. No. It's not national security to, you know, uh, radicalize somebody, to go, uh, to, to put voices of God in their head, pretend it's Allah, and then put guns and knives in their hands and send them off to fight. Right. Or to engage in a mass shooting in Colorado. Because that, that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, not only has the CIA set up ISIS, it's set up these mind control MK ultra patsies all over town. And they're doing it... They've been doing it on a recurring basis, you know, and they're exactly. continuing to do it. Exactly. You know that there's more soldiers commit suicide than are killed in action. And oh, it's yeah. Because yeah. They're, and, I think it's because they're waking up to what they're doing. Yes, you know, actually I have thought that, but since I started doing my research into MKUltra and how MKUltra is continuing, I wonder about that, because on the one hand, you could say PTSD, and yes, they're waking up to what they've been doing, and they're tormented. But on the other hand, it is very easy to point a gun and put the frequencies of suicide into somebody's yeah. head. And, and also to hit somebody with V2K and say, your life is worthless, you should take it now, you know, you should kill yourself. Because that's yeah. what they're doing to hundreds of people who are targeted. You know, because right. everybody who, who has V2K, and I have not experienced it, but many people have, they say that the messages they get are uniformly evil. Yeah. They're just malevolent. And they're all about um, de degradation, humiliation, um, and putting people down. Right. You know, saying you're worthless, your life is worthless, you know, things like that. Supposedly, so, supposedly the lowest vibrational energy is shame <clears throat> it's even lower than fear or anger shame is the, hmm. i can't quote a source i just heard that but. yeah yeah but but yes yes so you know so i've gotten a slightly different feeling now about those soldiers who are killing themselves because now i feel that many of them may be being targeted you know it could be and in, and in fact there are many who who know they're being targeted some don't know they are being targeted so perhaps they're being targeted and they don't know i mean you've got this whole hearing voices network thing going on people who hear voices but who have decided because they've all had bad experiences going to psychiatrists and being pumped up with, you know, deadly drugs that just destroy their lives, who have started their own little association called the Hearing Voices Network. So they, in a sense, try to communicate with their voices and try to go on with their lives. These are all good things. But those of us who know about these technologies, you know, there are so many ways to put voices into people's heads. Yeah. There's ultrasound voice transmission, there's microwave hearing, there's the neurophone. 
there's so many ways now, you know, and the patterns are out there. So, so those of us who know are inevitably going to suspect that they are being messed with, you know, they are being targeted. They are, they, they are voices are indeed being introduced into their heads through technology. This, so this is not schizophrenia, this is technology. And so this is why I think you're doing a fantastic job, Paul. I think your show and, you know, the show of, shows of many others who are in the alternative media world, who are beginning to listen to the stories of those who are being targeted and who are beginning to um, relay those stories out to a wider audience, I think, you know, the, the service that you are performing today is extraordinary because you are doing this sort of in a vacuum of media attention, you know, with mainstream media completely co-opted. So in a sense, you are creating new media that is um, truthfully holding up a mirror. Um, and I think more of us need to do that. And I think more people need to become the media in a sense, you know, start, start talking about this and start getting the information out there so that people begin to have a choice or begin to see that there is a reality beyond national security and secrecy that they really need to pay attention to, you know. So, well, I, I think if, you know, if... Go ahead, go ahead, Ramallah. Um, one of the things I was thinking about that might be useful, perhaps, is, um, you know, there are so many researchers who have done such great work to kind of show that there's been classified research. Uh, Cheryl Welsh comes to mind, Dr. Nick Bagich comes to mind, also Rennie Pittman Mitchell, who's written several books, including Remote Brain Targeting. So. The research is out there, oh, and Mark Rich's books, you know, New World War, and mm -hmm. his other books as well, um, you know, and Robert Duncan's book as well. Um, Mark Ra it? Douglas Valentine, see Oh, and Douglas Valentine's books, and yeah. so forth. So, at some point, it might be helpful, perhaps, to, to just sort of focus on the age of electronic weapon warfare, and show perhaps start from the beginning, start from the present and kind of go backward a little bit, kind of show what's happening now to TIs, how they're being hit with weapons, and then go back and kind of show the documentation, you know, mm -hmm. as to how this weaponry has been developed, how it's kind of entered the classified space, how it's currently being actually being tested. And you can see the contracts, you know, and perhaps we need to show people the contracts show them that these contracts are actually being carried out by defense contractors. Put that information out there in a video, you know, so people can begin to see. And, and also show in tandem what the CIA has been doing, because the CIA has also been engaging in behavior modification research using electromagnetic radiation for more than 50 years. Sure. And actually, yeah, and actually Cheryl Welsh records that you know, John Marks, he was this researcher and writer who wrote the search for a Manchurian candidate. When he did that, he went through all of the files um, that I think were before the Warren Commission and the church, well, was it the church committee? All of the files, all of the MK Ultra files, actually, that were declassified, or rather that were discovered, right? Because literally those files were shredded. Richard Helm shredded the files. And there was, there was just, you know, there were just some files that were found later and that were made public. So he went through each of these files and he actually spoke to the CIA at the time. And he was told that the CIA had a room full of files on research that they had conducted using electromagnetic radiation to alter human behavior and human brains but they were not going to declassify those files. And I forget when he wrote this book. This is the book I'm talking about, The Search for the Manchurian Candidate, CIA and Mind Control. You know, it details all of the LSD experiments and all of those sensory deprivation experiments and so forth. Oh, okay, it says copyright 1979. So, this was in 1979. 
And later, I think probably in the 90s, Cheryl Welsh also foiled the CIA asking for those, for those files. And they refused to, and they said, we're not declassifying them. So, so obviously those files exist, obviously that research existed, you know, so past MKUltra, as many people have said, and as the CIA has apparently admitted, they have been engaging in research, quite contrary to what you hear in the New York Times. Um, so, I, so I think that's the kind of information we need to have out there before people, you know, we need to kind of pull together all of the information that we can glean from these books and start holding up these chronologies and this documentation and pointing to specific documentation to show, you know, the nature of these weapons, the fact that these weapons exist and the fact that these weapons are being used. And the results, uh, and the results of these weapons, what these yes. cause, the pain and suffering and the, uh, the death that this yeah. it's a it's a torture program it's it is torture it's program. totally a torture program and it's like shameless assassination and broad daylight yeah. and people need to know like people like my neighbors need to know exactly what is happening with DIs, right. exactly what they are okaying you know exactly what they are consenting to so i have been so irate with my neighbors that you know when i have seen them like this guy next to i mean he's a young guy and he just recently became a dad i've literally called him a murderer to his face i said you know how can you be taking part in this you are a murderer you are an assassin so when i said that to him he ran to the, to the kitchen window on his deck and shouted to his wife oh come and look at her she's gone mad she's saying crazy things yeah so you see, so you see, he's been primed to tell that story, yeah. to to pass around the word that I'm that I'm mad and so right. forth. So as we all know, the last thing I am is mad. <laughs> but, but what he is most definitely doing is he's assisting in murder and broad daylight. You know, he's assisting in an assassination. Right. So and he's creating a world for his son that's yeah. not human. Not exactly. Yeah. His daughter. Yeah. Right. That's exactly right, because that this is how it perpetuates, you know. So literally all these people who are because on the one hand I, you can see and I can certainly see how they haven't been able to say no to these guys with badges who knock on their door and say, You have to track this person. I right. can sort of see how they would do that. But when they are told by this person that they're not just tracking, that, that I am, I have told them, I have, I have given them enough information to let them know that I am being attacked. I'm being attacked with incredibly damaging radiation, pulsed radiation. You know, I'm being tortured, I'm being experimented on. There's neuroweaponry experimentation going on here. I have told them that. Yeah. So after you tell them that, you would think that they would change their minds, but they haven't. They have in fact revved it up. Right. And they've gotten very comfortable in hitting me now. You know, the, the situation has set in. It's like the new world order on right. the street. So That's horrible. Horrible. So that yeah, so that that's so in a sense what they are doing is they are creating that reality for themselves. And oh by the way, I think there's also a connection with Agenda Twenty One and with, you know, the um, the whole UN and taking over because you know, as you know, this is this this program is going on in many countries around the world. It's not just the US. It's it's all over Europe. It's in many countries in Asia, it's in many countries in Africa, it's in Australia, it's in New Zealand, it's in England. Sure. Um, so, which would make you think that there is a central body running this show, you know. It, it's not, because it's the exact same program. It's not people in competition with one another, as some people say, I don't yes. think. I think it's one, one primary organization, and I think it's Agenda 21. And the reason I think that so is because the woman across the street, the family across the street, who has consented to hit me, they started to put a green light on their house that burns all night. I find this so odd. In the mid, you know, and this is not just at Christmas time. This is like throughout the year now. 
And so has the neighbor next to me, wearing a, putting a green light on the porch. I mean, what is this green light? Is this part of the agenda 21 green shield or whatever? You know, it's like, because they, they've adopted this color green and the whole sustainable development thing associated with it. If you know about Rosa Corey and yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the UN agenda. So under the guise of sort of saving the world and saving the environment right. and using green, they're kind of just taking over vast swaths of land and pushing people into cities and and also insinuating their way into police departments. So you have the UN police inside your local police department yeah. and so forth. So, so I think that that's what's going on as well. So this new world order thing is not in the distant future. I think it's already here. Oh, absolutely. I think it, I think it's already here. It's mm. just how we're going to respond to it if we can respond to it. And I think information and trying to bring back our humanity is yeah. is, is yeah. our only option. I, there are some technologies that I'm finding uh, that that might be uh, might make this war a little more symmetrical. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, there's no answer right now. We're still looking and uh, the, the awakening and your wonderful presentation today. I, I don't know who could watch this presentation and not tear up and understand, <sighs> you know, that here we have a, a, a beautiful human being who's being made out to be insane. She's being tortured. She's being slowly tortured. And they, they don't, when, they, when you become a TI, you don't get out of it. Mm -mm, um, apparently not. It goes on and on. I don't, I, I don't know how it's going to stop. But you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a darn good try at trying to make them stop. You know? yeah. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is continuing to write about it and continuing to publicize it. And, um, and I really think it's important to start publicizing their names and faces. I do too. And, you know, I know, so I, I, I think you, you just keep moving forward. Right. And you keep continuing, try, continuing to try to inform people, you know, and um, kind of hope for the best. So. We need to videotape uh, what's going on. We need to have it on YouTube or the other less censorable uh, outlets so that people can see what's going on and move forward. Do you, it, in summary, we're, we're, we're getting long here and we get better, better luck getting people to watch videos that are shorter. But, yes. but you're so full of information. You know, I, I, just, I just want to go on and on with you. Um, so um, is there anything I'd love that... to come back if you want, but you know, I, I was thinking, as I was thinking, maybe sort of present some real documentation to people. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Is there anything for this little interview that you'd like to sum up at the end here? Um, well, maybe get on my pet subjects again, which is mainstream media. People who are educated, who are watching this, I counsel you. Stop listening to NPR, Democracy Now!, PBS, The New York Times, The Washington Post. They are not merely not telling you the whole story. They are deliberately printing lies. They are printing government propaganda. And as far as electronic weapon warfare goes, everybody needs to get educated about it in a real big hurry right now. Because these weapons are here. These weapons are on the ground. These weapons are in our streets. Our police departments are using them, and they are being used on people. And what's happening is people are being sickened. People are getting sudden illnesses. And everything, every single illness across the spectrum can be invoked by these weapons, you know, including things like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, things like that, lupus. All these things which you think, you know, are died in the wool illnesses with, you know, cats, all sorts of uh, seals from doctors, they can just be induced. Sure. They can just be induced with frequencies. So people need to be aware of that, that their illnesses may be technologically induced. 
And similarly with, you know, voices, which is another very huge aspect of this. People reporting voices could just be being technologically targeted. Yes. So psychiatrists need to wake up and actually psychiatrists need to educate themselves about neuroscience, neuroweaponry and the current state of warfare. You know, they need to know what's going on. That's great. So, so, so for one more time, give us your website, Romola, so we can go, um, and, go ahead. Sure. My website is the Everyday Concern Citizen, which is everydayconcern.net. And I post their information both about targeting, but, um, you know, and a lot of articles there about targeting, but also information about other things that are happening and issues such as about chemtrails and so forth. I'm actually hoping to become a bit more positive and focus a bit on my, the consciousness section of my website mm -hmm. and post some more uplifting articles. <laughs> so, hopefully. Hopefully we can get that done. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending time with us. This is lovely and this is a very, very powerful interview. I'm really proud to present it. Uh, um, our, thank you so uh, much, Paul. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad it worked out. I had no idea where this interview was going to go when we started. Yeah, it's wonderful. But I, I think we covered a lot of ground. Yes, we did. Thank you very much, Ramola, and we'll talk thank to you, you again. Thank you.